Hey, how's it going? So today I'm going to talk about Amazon Videos Voyagers, which came out in 2021. So it stars uh, <clears throat> Ty Sheridan. I'm just going to make my notes a little closer. Ty Sheridan, who plays Christopher. It also stars Lily Rose Depp, who uh, is... Johnny Depp's daughter, and you will know her from Tusk, uh, and her character is Sila in the movie, uh, and then uh, Fion Whitehead plays Zack, and you will know him from Dunkirk and Bandersnatch. Also stars Colin Farrell, who you will know from SWAT from a million years ago, uh, Total Recall, also, a lot, well, I don't know, kind of a long time ago, and uh, In Bruges, also a while ago. So uh, those are sort of the main characters that you'll know as actors. And, uh, oh, I already started rolling, and I forgot to hear my little housekeeping. So what I have playing in the background, the ringing is a Meditative Mind, and it's a Tibetan temple sounds remove negativity. And... It came out 5 4 and I'm just letting everyone know that I'm playing it. I'm not making any money here, so I'm not profiting, and I really appreciate their sounds. I just liked it and didn't shut it off this time, so props to Meditative Mind, and thank you. Um, <clears throat> okay, and so uh, the other things are here. Whoops. I hope that's visible. If it's not... Uh, it says there's always going to be spoilers, <laughs> like always, always, so just expect it. And the other says, uh, only good reviews of only shows I like, shows and movies. And so let me just make sure there's nothing more to add to that. Uh, oh, yes. This is just opinion commentary, and it's for your entertainment. And this is a Spirit TV critic review. And I call it that because, yes, I only re review things I like, <laughs> and I only give good reviews, but I don't just watch any garbage that comes my way. <laughs> there are things that I watch, and I get something out of them, as I will proceed to tell you about right now. <laughs> so, um, in the story, it's another one of those takes on... Uh, Ender's Game, which was first a novel and then became a movie, I don't know, a while back. I don't know exactly how long. And also, that is something that is known in reality, particularly the way I learned of it, having to do with space travel as 20 and done. And I mentioned that to someone who I don't think follows that kind of stuff that led me to... 20 and done in space, but as soon as I said 20 and done, she was like, oh yeah, I heard of that. So I didn't, like, at the time, ask her what she heard, but what I heard is <clears throat> there's some, like, real science fiction-y sounding stuff that may or not, may or may not be true about, like, lessening the age of people for their 20 years of service and then reinstating their initial age that they were when they signed up. Uh, before they like went and did the 20 so uh <laughs> so much is kept from us by our leaders and our government for our own good because apparently we can't handle anything we're just gonna fall apart and lose our minds which we have done lately but not because of what they're saying they're afraid of so my point is is 20 and done the way i heard about it with the aging and de-aging and such could be real I don't know, but it sure gets talked about, about talked about a lot in film and fiction in general. So there's that, um, and then there's just like I'm sure they have 20 year enlistments. I'm sure they have a whole menu of enlistments for military service, but that's about all I know for sure. So that said, um, it's a take on those things. And it's been done before, as I mentioned, like and, and Ender's Game. 
I'm sure there's other ones. I'm, they're just not immediately coming to mind right now. <clears throat> and so, um, like I said, I only do reviews of stuff that I like, although I watch a lot of stuff. I don't necessarily review it or even talk about it. So, um, this one, I liked it. It was, you know, it didn't get me like all excited jumping out of my skin. Um, the players are probably more well known, well known to people that watch movies like Divergent or Ready Player One that have their, I think they're from young adult novels and I haven't read those, so I don't know those stories. And I haven't watched those movies. Like, I've never seen Harry Potter. I did try to read it, but the names, I, I couldn't even get beyond a couple of chapters. Like, the names were driving me crazy. So I just said, forget it. <laughs> so, you know, like, I don't indiscriminately consume stuff. And then come and talk to you about it. <laughs> so this, I was kind of like, I liked it okay. I mean, that's was basically my feeling on it as far as like execution as a film it's good to look at it's um you know it's about what you expect from a space movie so like i said i wasn't like oh hoo -hoo, excited about it um but it's serviceable it does the job and it else it says a lot you know it's kind of like the whole metaphors within our like more than the sum total of the story <clears throat> or at least it was for me so i finally decided with i guess some nudging because i did ask like why is it taking who did i ask I asked my guides and angels i said why is it taking me so long to decide if i want to do this and so now that i've decided i want to go ahead and do something about it why is it taking me so long to actually go and do I, was, I don't know like I was just kind of stuck in the mud about it but I just had to you know release expectations on myself and <laughs> that was like the big cork right there like just like okay you know it's there you know you gotta deal with it like think about something else for a while sleep on it whatever you gotta do just leave it alone there's no hurry there's no one snapping the whip behind you like hurry up and turn out those videos <laughs> So, I did ruminate on it for a while, and <clears throat> some things that had been sort of on my mind about, like, things in reality, like, uh, all the billionaires that we have now, like, Bezos and Branson and uh, Musk, and, you know, who I'm sure there's others that are going for space, and tourism, which... In my mind, that is something that only, like, sort of the peers of the rocket makers or, you know, rocket travel inventors, you know, entrepreneurs, whatever you want to call them, that is the class of people, in my opinion, who are going to have the money to shell out to go, what, be in, you know, like, upper Earth orbit and nauseated? I feel like it's gonna, of course, lead to something else. You hear a lot of talk about, you know, we're meant to go to the stars. Like, that's what we're supposed to do. We always have looked to the stars forever. Excuse me, but blah, blah, blah. Not all of us are gonna be able to go immediately, unless you wanna sign up to be the servant class and 20 and done that way, which the things you end up doing as the servant of really rich people that have a different perception of life than your average bear, by which I mean like the 0.1% life and understanding of yours are two polar opposites, to put it mildly. And the thing about those people that kind of always it's stuck in my craw, I guess you could say, is that they so don't value the life of all of the people, the lives of all of the people that do all of the stuff for them. Like nothing happens without all of the other little people that you think are smelly and like, you know, you don't want to step over them because they're homeless and they're terrible because they're homeless and like they just... 
the more wealthy they become, it almost appears, well, no, it does appear, like any, like, understanding that you are, if you lost all of your money and you were in the same position, like, if your lives were switched, you could be on that sidewalk being stepped over by the person you're, you know, disparaging and stepping over and God knows what else, but, I mean, who do you think... Why do you think human trafficking or slavery ne never goes away? Because there is a class that wants that. They don't want employees that think. They don't want employees that get sick. They don't want employees that want rights. They don't even want fellow citizens that have rights. I mean, I kind of always felt that way, but it's sure becoming apparent lately. Or it feels like it is. So I feel like these people are like, yeah, sure, they're making a tourism in some few of the whole rest of the percentage of humans will be able to make it there, like a contest or, you know, <laughs> the fifth element, you know, something like that. You know, some poor people will get up there if you want to go. Like, me, I wouldn't go, I don't think. <clears throat> There's a lot of reasons for that, but I'm not going to go into that now. Um, so, but I say, you know, it's like we want to always go and like colonize other planets or go find some planet that's not suitable for our life form and terraform it and like just erase whatever's already there and hello you don't know like if it's intelligent to our measure our barometer of what intelligence is you know like and we don't know how long whatever's there has been there. Like, it maybe has been there for millions, billions. Of, we don't know. We're just going to come barging in like the bear in a china shop. And, yeah, I know it's bull, but it feels more like bear for this one. And just destroy. <laughs> like, God of destruction. And then you're going to create. But it's like, wrong, wrong, wrong. Uh, we, I, the, the reason why I say that is because I feel like we shouldn't be going and colonizing and owning stuff and taking land and people away from the land and they were on for also like, you know, eons and millennia, whatever it is, really long time for these other people from across the pond to come charging in, metaphor, to come charging in and take over and just completely ignore the life that was happening there completely fine even though you don't understand it you think it's wrong to the people that were there doing it not wrong totally okay that's why they kept doing it successfully successfully for so long and again perception makes a difference like what the colonizers coming to america from europe saw in the people that they encountered when they got here i mean they thought so little of them just read the stories, learn the history, watch a show, whatever you got to do, but it's not good. It's not pretty. And so I feel like we got some work to do on ourselves and our home before we go charging off and we don't know how to act. <laughs> like, I don't think we should take our show on the road and, you know, make it viral because we're a disease. <laughs> we're not even cured of ourselves here. <laughs> It's, you know, and the thing that happens in the show is like another illustration of this. Like, they said they want to send the best and the brightest, okay, that we got to the new place. And it's going to be a generational mission, which means the people that go will probably have their grandchildren and or great grandchildren be the ones that set foot on the, dust, the you know, the ultimate destination. So, <clears throat> what happens on the way there, <laughs> very human of us, you know, the, the role of <clears throat> Richard or Colin Farrell in this is to sort of shepherd these children who, you know, already on earth, they're grabbing up children and turning them into the brightest and the best. And, you know... Like, they don't even have experiences in the outside world. They just don't know it until they're off the planet irrevocably. Like, they can't come back. 
So that's something that they don't have. And what they do, knowing that these are teenagers, like imagine if you were a teenager. Well, you don't have to imagine to watch the show, but you discover like all these experiences when you're an adolescent and you're still like a child and your brain is a sponge and everything is experience to you. Everything is feeling, everything is emotion. And do you know, you remember, or are you still a teen? <laughs> are you not a little nuts? So <laughs> sometimes, I mean, come on, I remember feeling crazy <laughs> a lot of the time. So um, what they do though, the big brains that decide to undertake this mission or, or to create this mission for other people to undertake, because these guys who, you know, the scientists that make all this up, they're not going to go to the new Eden or the new earth or I don't even know what they called it in this. <laughs> it kind of doesn't matter. <laughs> Probably, the, I think the New Earth is what they went with. <clears throat> um, so, like, just regular kids, if they think that there's something that they could have, should have had, do they not, like, lose it <laughs> sometimes? A lot of times. <laughs> so, what they do to ensure that, you know, your typical hasty teenage decision and hormonal emotional overload behavior doesn't happen is basically you give them saltpeter. But, <laughs> you know, because it's in the script, <laughs> there's got to be some action, there's got to be some tension. Stuff happens, and they end up losing their mentor. And, you know, then without constant supervision, things get discovered like that they're being fed saltpeter and then that like I mean they have had no um what is the word uh, when you're horny basically um okay I can't think of it it's gonna come right to mind as soon as I'm done here libido they have sorry <laughs> But that's what it's like. They're like, ah, kids, it's crazy. This stuff happens right now. Go do it. Don't think first. Just go. And then, like, the sexuality has been completely, like, retarded by what I'm just going to call saltpeter for expediency's sake. And um, so they stop taking it, and chaos ensues, of course. And again, because it's probably in the script, when it seems so desperate, it's like everyone's going to die before they even get where they're going. And, you know, the alternative is dry drowning with pressure in space. So kind of want to stay away from that. So the, the worst you can imagine begins to happen. But they being the best and the brightest, kind of realize like, oh, well, maybe that's why they were like giving us this stuff so that we didn't do this, <laughs> you know? Um, so they kind of sew it up and you don't know, you don't get to see the end of it because who's going to sit there for 30 years and wait for generations to get born and pass and so on, but you, you know, you get the feeling like Okay, optimism is probably what is expected here from the audience. And I suppose that's true. But for me, I don't know why I got to be just like a bitter pill, I guess. I'm just thinking, again, like, I don't think we should go anywhere and start doing stuff to other places until we get our stuff together here. And then maybe think about going other places and trying to do stuff. <laughs> it's just an opinion though you know like not the end of the world <laughs> but that was the kind of realization that I got from it is that yes we could do that we probably should do that not for the reasons of that did not happen in this film like alien attack or catastrophe from space you know or like it was all about us it is all about us not being able to get along with each other. 
And if we can't do that here, I don't think we should go other places. That's just my opinion. So if I didn't get like some kind of something from this, I probably wouldn't be on here talking about it. But as I said, it's perfect. It's good. It's fine. It's fine. I mean, I liked it. I did. I mean, I watched the whole thing. There's things that I'm just like, oh, this is so bad. But anyway, <laughs> you don't need to hear any more than that. Really, you know? Okay, so that's Voyagers. Thank you and good night. <laughs>